It's gonna rain. Well, how'd you figure that out, killer? How come you change your vote? Well, it just seemed to me there was room for doubt. You haven't got a leg to stand on, you know that, I hope. Oh, I don't feel that way. There were a lot of details that never came out. Yeah, well, good luck. Oh, come on. You're like everybody else. You think too much, you get mixed up. You know what I mean? Now, listen, I don't think you have any right to... Loud mouth. <laughs> Storm we had last uh, it was like November I don't know, something. It was, it was quite a storm we had there. It was right in the middle of a game. Uh, we were behind you know, 76, but just thought of the ball in real, real tempo. It was like a cut right and slash here and slash right and cut right here. And um, <laughs> we had this kid slatter. It was a box. Wish I had another one just like him. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm the uh, assistant head coach at the uh, Andrew J. McCorkle High School. Yeah, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, starting to move along real nice. The whole of the line is just, just coming apart. And it starts to come down. Cats and dogs, just like this. Just whoosh, right down. Well, that was murder. You know? I swear, I, I, I really bawled him just to couldn't go near him. Yeah. Well, what is it with this fan here? I don't... Say switch with the lights. Well, things are looking up here, huh? <laughs> yeah. You guys ever go to the garden? That's a damn stupid thing to do. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, you know? <laughs> Pardon me. And how do you like it? Even Steven. Pretty surprising, isn't it? Yes. They left business before when that tall guy, what's his name, was trying to bait me. And that doesn't prove anything. I'm a pretty excitable person. I mean, where does he come off from? A public avenger, sadist, and everything. I mean, anyone in his right mind would grow a stack. He was just trying to bait me. He did an excellent job. I'll tell you what I think. We're going nowhere here. I'm ready to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. There's no point in this thing going on anymore. Yeah, I go for that too. So let's take you to the judge and let the kid take his chance to fall. Oh I don't think the judge will accept the hung jury. He hasn't been in here very long. Well, let's find out. I am not in favor of that. Listen, this kid wouldn't stand a chance with an hung jury, and you know. No, well, hold on. Nobody's going to change his vote. Let's take it inside. You still don't think there's room for reasonable doubt? No, I don't. Pardon. Maybe you don't fully understand the term reasonable doubt. 
What do you mean? I don't understand. Well, how do you like this guy? I'm telling you, they're all alike. They come over here running for their life, and before they can take a deep breath, they're telling us how to run the show, huh? Boy, the arrogance of this guy. Hey, all right, let's stop the arguing for about two minutes in here. Who's got something constructive to say? I'd like to go over something, if you gentlemen don't mind. An important point for the prosecution was the fact that after the boy claimed he'd been at the movies during the hours that the killing took place, couldn't remember the names of the movies or the, the stars who appeared. This gentleman here has brought that point in here several times. That's correct. It was the only alibi the boy offered. He himself couldn't back it up with any detail at all. Putting yourself in the boy's place, do you think you could remember tales after an upsetting experience such as being slapped in the face by your father? I think so. Is there any special details to remember? The boy couldn't remember the names of the movies he saw because he wasn't there that night. According to the police testimony in court, the boy was questioned by the detectives in the kitchen of his apartment. While the body of his father was lying on the floor in the bedroom. Do you think you could remember details under those circumstances? I do. Under great emotional stress? Under great emotional stress. He remembered them correctly in court. He named the pictures and the stars who played in them. Yes. His lawyer took great pains to bring that out. He had three months from the night of the murder to the day of the trial in which to memorize them. It's not difficult for a lawyer to find out what played at a particular theater on a particular night. I'll take the testimony of the policeman who interrogated the boy right after the murder. But he couldn't remember a thing about the movies. Great emotional stress or not. I'd like to ask you a personal question. Go ahead. Where were you last night? I was home. How about the night before that? Come on, what is this? No, that's all right. I left the office at 8.30 and went straight home and to bed. The night before that? That was uh, Tuesday night. The night of the bridge tournament. I played bridge. Monday night. When you get down to New Year's Eve, 1954, let me know, eh? Monday night. Monday night, uh, my wife and I went to the movie. What did you see? The Scarlet Circle. It is a very clever who done it. What was the second feature? The, uh, I'll tell you in a minute. The uh, remarkable, this was uh, something, the... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Bainbridge, the remarkable Mrs. Bainbridge. I saw that. It's called The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. Uh, yes, The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. I think that's right. Who was in The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge? Barbara Long, I think it was. Or dark, very pretty girl. Then, or Long, something like that. Who else? I'd never heard of them before. It's a very inexpensive second feature with uh, unknown. And you weren't under an emotional stress, were you? No. I wasn't. I think the point is made. Big point. <laughs> you can talk till your tongue is dragging on the floor. The boy is guilty, period. Know what I mean, my friend? He's got those cloth drafts. We're all gone, my friend. Oh, boy, look at that ring. There goes your ball game. It's always sharp. Serves, you got the infield coming. Say, could I see that knife a second, please? Well, we're still tied up six to six. Who's got a suggestion? It's five after six. Let's get some dinner. Well, why don't we wait till seven o'clock? Give it another hour. Okay with me? Uh, there's something I'd like to say. I mean, it's been bothering me a little as long as we're stuck. Well, there was this whole business about the stab wound and how it was made. The downward angle of it, you know. Don't tell me we're going to start with that again. They've been over it and over it. Well, I know they did, but I don't go along with it. Now, the boy was five feet, seven inches tall. His father was six, two. That's a difference of seven inches. It's a very awkward thing to stab down into the chest of someone who's more than half a foot taller than you are. Give me that. I'll give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. 